At the beginning of the movie, we see a nurse named Asha with her ailing mother. Her mother tells her about the ring that Asha's grandma gave her when she was about to get married. Asha expresses her love for her, but her mother teases her, saying that she will leave when she gets a boyfriend. However, Asha says that she just wants to stay and take care of her. The movie fast forwards, and we find Asha living alone after her mother's passing. While taking a shower, she hears her mother calling her name, but she dismisses it thinking it's just in her head. Later, a woman named Rum approaches Asha, introducing herself and asking if she has a minute. Asha asks, what is it about? To which the woman says her mother came to her. Asha clarifies that her mom is dead and begins leaving there. But Rum says she has been looking for her address for more than two weeks. She says she knows it's hard for her to believe her, but if she would come to her place, she can explain everything. Asha starts to leave, but she pauses when Rum mentions her mom told her about the ring, the same ring her mom's mom gave her before she got married. That night, Asha meets Rum, who asks her to extend her hand. Rum explains that when the candle extinguishes, she won't be in her body anymore. She instructs Asha to call her mother's name when the room is plunged into darkness, and her mother will answer. Rum closes her eyes, and as the candle extinguishes, she falls unconscious coughing like Asha's mother. In a poignant moment, she Asha. calls out Asha's name, expressing that it's cold. A flashback reveals Asha finding her mother lying lifeless on the bed, and she apologizes to her. The next day, hospital staff discuss Santi, a former home care worker fired due to illness. They believe the house she worked in is haunted, as the owner used black magic to become wealthy. Following this, we see a woman in the same house, waking up after hearing her name. Her gaze fixates on a ghost in the corner of the room, causing her immense fear. Summoning courage, she looks again but finds no one there. However, the ghost now appears below and approaches her. It reaches her bed, and the scene abruptly shifts to the hospital, revealing that Asha is about to provide home care in the same house, and a boy urges Rama to disclose the truth about the house to Asha. Rama approaches Asha and inquires if she has spoken to Santi, to which she says, not yet. Rama apologizes for asking her out on the night her mother passed away, to which Asha says that it's not his fault. The following day, Asha gets ready for her home care job, and as she leaves the house, we catch a glimpse of her mother's spirit in her room. She then visits the house, where Elam explains that his dad Ismail refuses to go to the doctor, so they provide care at home. He asks if she's comfortable being alone, and she confirms. Elham advises her to inform him if she needs a day off and urges her not to go absent like the previous nurses. Before leaving, he mentions that his wife Maya also resides there. Later that night, Asha attempts to assist Ismail with his dinner, but he pushes the plate away. Asha emphasizes the importance of eating for proper nutrition and a quicker recovery, and while cleaning the floor, she asks him not to refuse food again. Following this, when she goes to the washroom, Asha hears her mother calling her name. Later, during a video call with Rama, Asha expresses her sympathy for Ismail, mentioning that he only has one family member left to care for him. She also tells him that Ismail has a daughter, but she hasn't seen her adult picture, speculating that she may have passed away when she was a little girl. She then excuses herself, asking him to wait, and during this, Rama notices something strange in her room. Suddenly, she returns and informs him that she has to leave, as Ismail is awake. The next day, Asha discovers two graves outside the house. While inspecting them, she is startled to see Ismail at the window. Hastily, she rushes to his room but is shocked to find Ismail peacefully sleeping on his bed. On the other hand, Rama visits Santi's house and notices movement inside. He calls out for Shanti and enters the house, where he encounters a foul, rotten smell and to his horror, he discovers Shanti's lifeless body on her bed. Rama informs and calls for an ambulance, and a paramedic mentions that it appears she passed away over a week ago. Uncertain of the cause of death, he finds it strange that she seems to be scared to death. Meanwhile, 
Asha is sleeping in her room when she feels her mother's loving caress. In her sleep, she calls out to her mother, but upon receiving a response, she looks back in surprise, only to find no one there. Just then, she hears some sounds from under her bed, and when she gets down to check, she finds a talisman there. As she attempts to retrieve it, she starts hearing noises from above the bed, and two legs appear, as if someone is sitting on the bed, followed by white hair descending from the other side, instilling fear in her, and suddenly her mother wakes her up from her sleep. Later, when Asha attempts to feed Ismail, he refuses once again, and when she tries to force feed him, he pushes the plate down. Now, while picking up the food, Asha's attention is drawn to a talisman beneath Ismail's bed. She retrieves and examines it, realizing that it is precisely the same talisman she saw under her bed in her dream the previous night. Asha brings the two talismans downstairs with the rest of the garbage to dispose of them. There, she spots a woman who is likely Mia, Elham's wife, and Asha then discards the talismans into the dustbin. Later that night, while Rama is in the bathroom, the lights suddenly go off. Upon stepping out to check for a blackout, he is horrified to encounter Santi's ghost. Terrified, he attempts to flee, and as Santi's ghost moves towards him, the lights come back on, and Furman arrives at the scene. The next morning, when Asha wakes up, she discovers that both talismans are now under her bed. Later, Asha arrives at Rum's house with Rama and shows talismans photos. Rum examines them closely and informs Asha that the talisman in question might be evil. Asha discloses finding one under her bed and another under her patient's bed, to which Rum suggests that the person may not be genuinely ill but rather cursed. Rum then asks Rama about his wetten. Rama checks his phone and informs her that it's Kliwan Tuesday. Rum remarks that it's a very favorable wetten, signifying purity and immunity to black magic. She then suggests to Asha to burn those amulets when she returns home and provides her a chant to recite while performing the burning ritual. Once outside Rum's house, Rama asks Asha why she didn't inform Rum about Santi. Asha explains that she did mention it before coming to Rum's house, and Rum stated that Santi was already unwell before entering the house. Rama questions Asha's belief in Rum, suggesting she might be taking advantage of her, but Asha defends her, stating that she won't do that. That evening, Asha begins to burn the talisman and recites the chant. However, Mia knocks on the door, startling Asha, and she extinguishes the talisman before it burns completely. Mia enters, noticing the burning smell, and mentions hearing Asha talking to herself. She discovers the chant in Asha's hand, snatches it away, and warns her that her job is to take care of the old man, instructing her not to interfere in other matters. Asha explains that she had nightmares because of the talisman, to which Mia responds that she knows nothing about the house and instructs Asha to focus on taking care of the old man until his time comes. Later that night, Asha wakes up to the sound of her mom calling her name. She sits on her bed, looks around, and sees her mother's spirit in the room, who moves toward a wardrobe and then disappears, saying at the back. Asha slides the wardrobe, unveiling a hidden doorway behind it. As she ascends the stairs, she's astonished to find a room filled with black magic items. Hastily, she captures the scene with her phone camera. Meanwhile, Rama awakens to find Santi's ghost on his bed and gets terrified seeing her. But in the next moment, she vanishes. However, he notices a talisman on his bed, which he grabs and throws out of the window. The following day, Mia is stunned to discover the opening in Ismail's room. She questions Elam, asking if he is aware of the secret room. He admits he knew, prompting her to inquire why he kept it hidden all this time and wonders why he didn't inform her earlier. Mia immediately calls a shaman named Tarto to her house. And on the other hand, Rama again goes to Rum, and she says she had this feeling that he'd come today. Rama shows her the photos sent by Asha of the secret room, and Rum explains that the house harbors a supernatural being. She mentions that when someone uses black magic to attain wealth, there's always a part of their house under renovation, known as Kandang Babra. As part of the pact, a family member usually dies at a young age, often the child, and in this particular family, it was the eldest daughter. Asha clicks photos of the shaman and sends them to Rama, who then shows the photos to Rum. 
She warns him that there are both good and evil shamans, so they need to be careful, as in a few years, the entity will demand a sacrifice. Which is why Ismail sealed that room, Torto asks Elham, when Ismail closed the door, and Elham responds that it was three years ago. Rum informs Rama that there is a designated room to feed the being through offerings or sacrifices, and the most malevolent entities may even demand human sacrifices. Torto asks Elham what has happened since the door was closed, and Elham reveals that his family started to fall ill. Rum explains that the entity won't let Ismail die before seeking revenge by killing the entire family. However, it requires assistance from the outside to bring more power inside, because it is currently too weak. Just then, Asha video calls Rama, and he shows it to Rum, and suddenly Asha becomes possessed. Rum tells Rama that he must be there as Asha is in danger, and she is afraid that Shaman makes that being even stronger. The demon inside Asha tells the Shaman to leave, and Rum instructs Rama that the ritual needs to be cancelled, and she provides him with a spell to recite during the ritual. Meanwhile, the possessed Asha advances towards Torto and attacks him, but he fights back. Torto's assistants join in to help him, and collectively, they bring Asha to her knees, using Torto's powers. The demon inside Asha declares this as his territory, and Torto notices the demon using an ancient language. He asks for its name, to which the demon laughs, refusing to reveal its name, claiming superiority over Torto and asserting its immortality. Torto utilizes his powers to cast out the demon, leading the demon to scream. He then extracts a string-like substance from Asha's mouth, causing her to vomit, and Torta tells Elham that they must hold a ritual tonight, as Cleone Friday is a good night. Following this, Torto initiates the ritual, and meanwhile, Rama covertly enters their house, locates Asha's room, and unties her hands and legs while attempting to wake her up. When Asha regains consciousness, he informs her that they need to recite the spell together. On the other hand, Tonto also begins reciting spells to protect Ismail's family from the entity and compel it to return to its rightful place. After a while, as he completes the ritual, the offering plates placed outside break and catches fire. Meanwhile, Asha and Rama have also recited the spell, and Rama informs her that they will leave when it's quiet. However, he hears sounds as if someone is approaching the room, so he quickly hides under her bed. Torto then enters the room with Mia and instructs her to keep Asha hydrated. After they leave, Rama comes out from under the bed and discovers a talisman in Asha's bag. He realizes that it is the same talisman he found in Santi's room. In addition, he finds a piece of paper in Asha's bag, and to his surprise, it contains the same spell they had just recited moments ago, with an instruction to recite it 12 times on Clue One Friday, right under Ismail's room. He goes to Asha and asks her to wait there, promising her that he will be back. Meanwhile, we see Rum performing some kind of ritual, and she sends a fireball flying toward Ismail's house. Later, Asha wakes up to some sounds and decides to investigate. She goes to the secret room and is shocked to see her mother's spirit in a corner, calling her by her name. And then, in a demonic voice, her mother's spirit asks her for help. Mia also wakes up hearing some sounds, and when she comes out, she realizes that the sounds are coming from above. Anxious, she also comes to the secret room to check where she sees that the noises are coming from a window. And as she starts moving towards it to close it, suddenly someone pushes her outside the window. Later, when Elham comes out to search for Mia, he is shocked to discover her lying outside. And to his horror, he realizes that his wife is dead. Just then, he hears his father's laughter echoing from his room. This enrages Elam, and he rushes to his room with the intent to confront and possibly kill him. Meanwhile, Rama sneaks into Rum's house, only to find her engaged in a ritual and noticing his presence. She says she had this feeling that he'd come today. Here, Elam finds that his dad is not in his room, but he hears his laughs from the secret room. Rama questions Rum about a talisman he saw in Santi's room, now found in Asha's bag. Rum explains that shamans often use similar talismans, suggesting it might be from the shaman in that house. However, he says he is sure it's from her and asks her to tell him what is the plan. Rum bursts into laughter and tells him that he has a good lunch. However, he doesn't have the confidence 
and that's why he keeps making mistakes. She discloses that there is something that she wants in that house that can give her more power. She went there, but she could not get in because someone in that house created a protection. And then she met Santi. Rayma gets shocked to know this, and Rum says that Santi was the only one who could enter that house, doing what she asked her to, but she was stupid and weak. Meanwhile, as Elham tries to attack Ismail, someone stops him by placing a noose around his neck and lifts him up, ultimately killing him in front of his dad. Here we see that Rum has paralyzed Rama and she is preparing him for a ritual. She tells him that she doesn't want to suffer again and then asks him to relax, stating that it won't hurt. On the other hand, Asha, under the influence of the entity, sets Ismail on fire. However, upon regaining consciousness, she breaks down in tears over her actions. Suddenly, the flames extinguish, and as she looks around, she is horrified to see a massive and terrifying entity in the room. Later, Rum arrives at the scene, takes something out of a bag, and places it on the table. And shockingly, it is revealed to be Rama's severed head as an offering for that entity. She kneels before the entity and declares her intention to worship the outcast god's creature. A demon wants a man who allied with the devil, offering Rama's head, born on a Klewan Tuesday. She implores the entity, now revealed as Kajiman, to be her protector. Kajiman asks if she knows its demands for it to go with her to which she pledges to do her best to fulfill them for the rest of her life. With a growl, Kajiman disappears, leaving behind a small dagger in the same spot. The scene shifts to that night, when Rum makes Asha communicate with her mother's spirit for the first time. Asha pleads to see her mother, and Rum agrees, stating that she can grant her wish, but in return, Asha must help her. Back in the present, Rum leaves her house, and on the other hand, when Asha returns home, she is both shocked and overjoyed to find her mother back. And the movie ends here. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, summon that subscribe button, and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.